often we weren't looking, so uh, it's good to make those corrections. Thanks for being patient. Uh, once again, Happy New Year. We're excited to be in church. Um, it's, it's exciting to be with God's people. It's a foretaste of heaven. Think about it. Yeah, yeah man. We get excited about that. So uh, if you're here for the first time, we hope you feel right at home. And those of you watching, likewise, you'll enjoy your time. We, um, we really enjoy the presence of the Lord. And uh, I'll you know, endeavor to allow him to walk through the corridors of our hallways, of our lives, to uh, make us more like him. So... This morning, uh, we're going to uh, acknowledge that Mark Montanio, the dude that sits up in the front row every Sunday, is uh, going to Guinea, West Africa on Tuesday for five months. And uh, yeah. And you might ask, well, where's he going? We have a map here so you can sleep better tonight. Um, so Africa, big continent, and Guinea, and West Africa, right over here, we can zero in a little closer. Um, that was just a little closer. Uh, do we have another one or no? Okay. All right, so, so um, Mark's going to fly into Conakry, which is right on the coast here. And he's taking a small plane over to Zell, where John Erickson and Anya have their uh, medical facilities, churches. There's John right here, and um, that's, that's where he's going. So um, many of you have heard John and Anya speak here. Uh, we've supported their ministry for decades. They're excellent missionaries, doing a great work in Guinea, and... Um, Mark is, is going to take off and serve over there with John and Anya. Pretty cool. Um, our family went with Mark and his son to uh, the Philippines several years ago. And we worked in an orphanage. It was very cool. Great experience. And, um, and so now Mark is going to Guinea. So, Mark, come on up. Do you have somebody who's going to take your place when you're gone? Ken Bright said we should... Blow my face up in a picture. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll do that. And put, it on, put it on the seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can do <laughs> That's this. What I said to do. Yeah, we'll miss this dude. Um, so, I know you're all packed. No, I'm not. I'm close. <laughs> Will you stand with me as we pray for this man? Father, we thank you this morning for your hand on Mark's life and how cool it is, uh, even at this point in his life, he could have said, you know, I'm just going to cruise until uh, Jesus comes, but no, he's going to be proactive, intentional about serving you. And Lord, thank you for this opportunity he has to go to Guinea, work with John and Anya. And uh, Lord, we pray that you will use Mark as a cup of cold water for them. He'll be a real source of encouragement and... Um, and Lord, that you will give him the abilities that he's going to need to uh, serve faithfully over these next five months. We pray that you'll protect him physically, Lord. You'll keep him in good health and a sound mind, uh, that he'll be strong in the Lord as he represents the kingdom of God and even represents Life Church in Guinea. So Lord, thank you for his life. And uh, as he flies to and flies back home again, we just pray for your protection day and night. And uh, we thank you for his faithfulness to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, you can be seated. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm Brian, and happy Sunday. Tonight at 6.30, we're kicking off the new year with Transformed. This time each year, we set aside four evenings, Sunday through Wednesday, to seek God's face his heart, and his plan with an hour of prayer and worship. We know we serve a great God, and we want to take the time and heart position to express just how much we love him. We hope you all can make it. But first, promptly following the gathering, 
we'll be hosting a membership class in the cafe. Here you will learn about our statement of beliefs and what it means to join the Life Church family. Now, ladies, listen up because next Sunday you're invited to attend the first ever Ladies Bible Study Workshop. Do you ever feel overwhelmed when reading the Bible? Not certain just how to approach Bible study? or just looking for some extra tools to apply to your quiet time, then this workshop is for you. And if you're looking for ways to get plugged in, check out our website to see all the updates. We have all of our life groups posted and you can join in at any time. Life groups start in just one week. And for all the newcomers, please fill out one of these blue connect cards and turn it in at Guest Central in the lobby after the gathering. This helps us know how to serve you better. And lastly, if you have kids with you today, we encourage you to check out our awesome classes in the kids' wing. But if your kids would have preferred to stay with you, please head to the family room or the nursing mother's room to help us cut down on extra noise during the message. If you need help finding your way, just ask someone wearing a Life Church lanyard, and they will be happy to help. That's all, folks. Enjoy the gathering. It's working. <laughs> so if you want to learn more about the Life Church core values, its mission, its vision, uh, discover a place where you can serve, uh, we encourage you to attend the 45-minute meeting. And the cool thing is they're bringing in pizza uh, while you enjoy the class. So you'll be well-fed it's always good. Hey, we are in Transformed uh, starting today for the next four days. And just a heads up, at the back table when you come out of the auditorium, uh, the table by the stairway, there's a, a few items there to help you, to assist you in your uh, journey these next four days and even beyond for 2024. And so I just want to highlight um, uh, what's back there. Number one, there's a, a packet here, Pray First. Uh, it's a personal prayer guide for Transform 24, 2024. You can use it not only for the next four days, but uh, to help you pray. And there's uh, several options there that you can um, access. Um, We have, if you already failed your Bible reading reading resolution, you know, we're seven days in and I'm sure some of you said, man, I'm going to read my Bible every day and you bailed out on it. There's an article here to uh, encourage you because listen, um, we all struggle. We, you know, from time to time. So it just wants to encourage you. It's a nifty article. Um, We have five tips for creating healthy Bible reading habits. And when it comes down to it, when we talk about resolutions, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few moments, um, habits really supersede resolutions. And this talks about establishing a habit. If you were to ask me, uh, you know, what, what, do I do when I pray? Well, something, and this will be up on the screen, the Acts prayer method, uh, A, adoration, C, confession, T, thanksgiving, <laughs> and S for supplication. So, so if, if you want a, a simple model, this is a great one to use. Uh, I... I I'll just tell you what I do. I, I, I have a time of worship and praise on the front end. Then I pray for America. And then I pray for our children and our grandchildren. And then I pray for the church. That God's presence would be strong here. That the Holy Spirit would be active in pointing people to Jesus that God's provision financially would be seen and that God's protection would oversee the unity. It's a gift that is here at Life Church. 
So that's, that's kind of a, I am a routine guy. I need, I need, um, I need habits, I need routines, and uh, I really believe that's a key to um, being strong for the Lord year after year. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but um, for me, that's the way I'm wired. And, uh, and then just to give you a heads up, the last, this last week, I have been intentional about spending time uh, putting a worship song on and just listening to the lyrics over and over again. In fact, at the end of uh, the gathering this morning, uh, you'll be hearing one of those songs that I've been camping out on that have uh, encouraged me just to uh, keep my heart uh, in, a, in a place that's sensitive to God and his Holy Spirit because it's so easy for our hearts to become hardened and calloused. Have you noticed? Yes or no? Okay. Um, and then... You've also heard about, uh, you know, fasting, and, and there's, a, there's an insert back there as well that talks about the different kinds of fast that you can plug into, a Daniel fast. We've been going through the book of Daniel, and you know what that one's all about. A partial fast, that's um, specific times of the day, 6 a.m. to 3 a.m. or 3 p.m., and from sundown to sunup to sundown. Or a soul fast, that's where <clears throat> you choose to stop using social media. Now, that's not a bad thing, is it? No. Uh, watching television, um, whatever. Just fasting from lifestyle things to kind of help you uh, stay on track um, with the Lord. And, and I, I need to do that. Um, so, what's going to happen today? I, you've heard me say that uh, it's important to get into a rhythm, a habit, uh, use systems in your life. And one of those systems, I believe, is that's valuable more now than ever, and that's attending. Uh, church weekly. Last Wednesday in the adult class, um, we, I, I just have to say, we experienced God's presence in a very special way, you know, a time of worship. And for me, um, really crying out to God, broken how much I need him. And I think <clears throat> coming into church is like a buffet, you know? It's not, you don't pick and choose what you want. You just go through every line. My, my wife showed me some photographs of the Golden Corral. It was kind of a comedy thing, you know, people going through the line there. They didn't need to go through the line. <laughs> I'll just tell you that. <laughs> yeah. So when you come to church, you don't pick and choose like, man, I don't like the songs. I don't like worship, man. I just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to participate. That's wrong, man. That's wrong. From start to finish, we need to be engaged really in what God is doing. And, and praise and worship is a great opportunity just to get your eyes off yourself and put them on him. You know, it's, it's your breath I, I, oh, he's in my lungs. I pour out my praise. It doesn't say I'll drip out my praise. I pour it out, man. You know? So I was thinking, life church is not a golf course. And what does that mean? Well, when you have all these different deals, you know, the golf uh, challenges, you know, the people on the side are going, you know, we're in church, man, and when we clap, we clap, we pour it out, right? We give it everything we have. When we sing, we sing out. We give it everything we have. Yes or no? Yes. That's why we come. Not to be spectators, but to participate in what 
God is doing. So, I can't tell you, and I, I can, I can. Donald mentioned it last week too. It's cool if you come to church every week. But our culture today is saying it's not important, and people are deconstructing their faith regularly um, to say, I can, I can do this at home, or I can do this on my own, blah, blah, blah. No, you can't. You cannot. You will not survive in this culture today if that's your mindset. And let me tell you, that, that way of thinking is creeping into the church in America. So I, I just want to encourage you. And so for me, uh, even before I was a pastor, I made a decision that I would be in church every, every opportunity to get into that rhythm. And so when people have this thinking that, you know, I, I can come whenever I, you know, works into my schedule or, um, you know, it's not a priority, you are missing that buffet. Like Wednesday night, if you weren't here, you missed that buffet that was in the cafe. And people today that are, that are not here, they're going to miss the buffet that God's presenting to all of us through his word and through worship. And so the way I look at coming to church, it's not about me. It's about looking for people where I can give them a hug. And they encourage me and I encourage them. We need each other. You know, it's not about me. And too many churches in America, it's about me. You know, this is my chair. This is my parking spot. Don't dare sit there. No. Friends, really, if you're part of this family, you should want, look out for other people first and foremost. Make sure that, that you say hello to them, you make them feel at home, because that's the way it's going to be in heaven. I can tell you, you're not going to have your own chair in heaven. You know? Recliner in the corner. You know, I don't like people. No, it, it's not going to be like that. So, um, this year, may the spirit of the living God <sighs> convict each one of us to raise the bar in 2024. Yes? Yes? No more excuses. We're pressing on. Last week you heard Donald go through the value of reading your Bible. You can read it three times a week and it does you no good. That's what statistics bear out. You have to read your Bible at least four times a week for life change to begin to happen in you. And so we have Bible reading plans at Guest Central. We have, you've got an, you've, you should have received an email with um, the Bible app on different, different um, applications for, for reading the Bible. So Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. For 2024, Life Church, imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, as a pleasing aroma to God. So Life Church, you, you don't have the right to get offended by reading that, those two verses there. You don't have a right to get offended. We understand people have feelings and we are living in a culture today that everybody gets offended. Right? Yes or no? Yes. Remember, we're not on a golf course. And so because it says imitate God, does God get offended? No. Did Jesus get offended? He got offended with the religious community. That was about it. 
But in other words, we don't have the right to get offended. Why? Because we represent God's kingdom and we don't want to cause anybody else around us to stumble or undermine the credibility of Jesus and his kingdom. Indeed. Indeed. So we follow, we said we follow the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice. So, so there we have it. So why, why are we so committed about being committed to, to the church, to the church of Jesus Christ? In Ephesians 5, it says that Christ is the head of the church. You're not the head of it. I'm not the head of it. Christ is the head of it. He is the savior of his body, the church. Verse 25, just as Christ loved the church, he loves his church. He gave up his life for the church to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. So just as Christ cares for the church, we are members of his body. What does that mean? That means because Jesus, this is his church. If I have this blasé, you know, whatever, you know, really immature attitude that I could take the church or leave it, you know what you're doing? You are smacking symbolically the face of Jesus saying, I don't care about it because it's not a priority for me. Even though you died for it, even though you're making your church without spot or wrinkle, see? There has to come a day when that becomes so real to you that you can't stay away from church. You want to be here because Jesus is here and it's his church. Come on, come on. So we think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. Are you some people? No, you're not. You're not some people who stay away. So you're not some of those people that neglect, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. And it is closer today than it was when this book of Hebrews was written. I, uh, I do have a sermon. I haven't started yet. <laughs> but I, I really feel, um, I could say you need to be in church. Somebody else can say you don't need to be in church. And I, want to, I would personally encourage you, if you hang with people like that, I want to hang around them. I, you know, I would push back on that and say, wait a minute, this is Christ's church. It's his church. He died for her. He bled for her. He's coming back for her. Kevin DeYoung, Why We Love the Church, wrote a chapter to his son, Tristan, and this is what, how it reads. I'm not going to read a lot here, but he says, by the time you read this, it might be hip to like church again. Right now it isn't, but luckily for us, you're five. He's five years old. And for you, church is just another place with good toys, friends, and lots of space to run. That's not a life church, by the way. They teach the Bible to five-year-olds. You love church now, and you love it for many of the same reasons we love it. We get to see your friends there every week. And you know they're going to be there because they're parents and we have committed to being there. You get goldfish crackers and juice there while we get donuts and bad coffee. <laughs> We're not talking about live church. The coffee's good here, by the way. <laughs> and so are the donuts. But the idea is the same. Friendships and relationships. You're getting to know people whom you'll hopefully know for a long time because you share a bond in Christ. There may be very well be times in your life when you wonder why we're making you go to church. And let me say now that we won't be doing it to make your life more difficult or because 
we want to be right or in charge, we'll be doing it because we love church ourselves. We want to honor God by worshiping him with other believers and we care about your spiritual growth. And let me also say that when you get to be my age, you'll understand. I understand now why Mimi and Poppy made me go to church all those years and I'm so glad they did. I will echo that. I am so glad that my parents made me go to church. It wasn't a decision for a vote every weekend. We just went, boom. This year, I don't know what's going to happen. But I can tell you, I think all of us in this room and those watching online, there is a sense of anxiety anxiousness, like the feeling like something bad can happen. Our world feels so unstable. It's changing rapidly. And that's why we need, I believe, to be with God's people and celebrate his presence consistently with each other because we need each other. We're going to depend on each other. But I will tell you this, that Jesus is on the throne and he is not freaking out because he doesn't know what's happening this year. Right? Man, he knows what's going on. I told a few of the dudes the other day I was, when I was walking, I just felt like God, I'm standing in the need of prayer. That was my prayer. I'm standing in the need of prayer. And then I was reminded of Romans 8.34, that Jesus interceded. He's interceding for us right now. And so I thought, how cool is that? I'm standing in the need of prayer, but Jesus is already praying for me. He's already praying for you. And so we can go into this year with the confidence of knowing that Jesus has everything under control, and I rest in him. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's move on. You have your outline, and you can fill in those blanks. We're going back to the Depression days. In the 1930s, Mary Cushman had five children. Her husband got sick a lot, and he was making less than $18 a week to provide for the family. And so Mary herself started taking in laundry and ironing uh, side jobs, and she dressed her five children in Salvation Army clothes. And at one point, the local grocer, whom they owed $50, accused her 11-year-old son of stealing food from the store. And Mary said at that time, it was all I could take. I couldn't take it anymore. The pressure got to me. She said all hope was gone. And so she said, I I shut off my washing machine. I was doing the clothes. I took my youngest child, five-year-old daughter, into our bedroom I plugged up the windows and cracks with paper and rags. I turned on our gas heater that we had in the bedroom, but I didn't light it. And as I lay down on the bed with my daughter beside me, she said, Mommy, this is funny. We just got up a little while ago. (laughs) And I said to her, never mind, we're just going to take a little nap. And then I closed my eyes listening to the gas escape from the heater. And suddenly, suddenly I heard music coming from the kitchen. I forgot to turn off the radio in the kitchen. The music kept playing. And I heard someone singing the old hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear, all because we do not carry 
everything to God in prayer. I'd like to sing it, but I can't. <laughs> I can't. She said, as I listened to the hymn, I realized that I had made a tragic mistake. <sighs> Hope was rekindled in me. I realized that I had tried to fight all these battles and troubles alone without the Lord. And so I jumped up, I turned off the gas, I opened the door, I opened the windows, and she said, I spent the rest of the day thanking the Lord for being such a good friend. They eventually lost their home, but she never lost her hope. They weathered the storm through the depression. And Mary said, I, as I look back on that terrible day when I turned on the gas, I thank God over and over that I woke up in time to the hope he gives. The darkest moments we live through can only last a little time, and then comes hope. There's a moving truck, I believe, that has backed up to many of the houses in America. And the movers have gone into our homes and they've taken hope, boxed it up, and put it in the truck and drove off. Hope has been stolen from many of us. And just like Mary Cushman, hope had been stolen from her. But she was awakened to who Jesus was a reminder of who he is. And we've been talking a lot about um, habits um, and the Bible app, the U version. Many of you have plugged into that. Do you realize 700 million people have downloaded the Bible app in the world? If every person in America did that, that's 334 million, so double that people that have downloaded it. There's Bible reading plans. There's all different tools that you can use to stay connected with the Bible. The thing is with the Bible app, they monitor everybody's activity in a way that's cool, in a way that's kind of creepy. <laughs> you know? Um, so they know how you're doing on your spiritual journey and they know how much of the Bible you read, where you read, and when you said, no, I'm not going to do it anymore. So the Bible app, app people, they tracked the most searched theme in 2023. So you have 700 million downloads on that app, and all the people, all these different people searching for different things, looking for different verses because of different circumstances that they're going through, Uversion found that the most searched word or theme for last year was hope. People everywhere were looking for hope. The most searched Bible verse wasn't John 3.16 and it wasn't Psalm 23. The most searched Bible verse in 2023 was Isaiah 41.10. And it has to do with people being afraid or in trouble, looking for comfort, looking for assurance, looking for hope. And they found it in this verse. Shall we read it together? Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Pretty cool, huh? Do you see the don'ts there? Don't be afraid. Why? Because he's with you. Don't be discouraged. Why? Because God is your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. 
See the I wills there? I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. I will, I will. I will. That's the God you serve, man. You can trust him. You can trust him. So when the trucks packed up hope from your house, from your life, friends, re-engage in the Bible and your relationship with the Lord. Psalm 73, 13, did I keep my heart pure for nothing? The psalmist is wondering. I'm sure we have felt that from time to time. Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. Can you identify with that? Hmm? Verse 28, this is where he lands. But as for me, how good it is to be near God. Aren't you glad for that? That's one, you've heard me say this many times, but I love the Psalms because it's so raw. So transparent. Which gives you and I permission to be transparent before God. You don't have to hide your feelings or thoughts because God already knows what you're feeling and what you're thinking, right? So the psalmist poured it out, but then he ends up, but as for me, how good it is to be near God. How near, yeah. John 16, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Friends, Has hope been taken from you. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Another translation says, you will have trouble. But take heart because I have overcome the world. And I believe when you look at the crossroads of 2024, we're standing there and we have to make a decision. Are we going to live for the Lord or are we going to allow the world to compromise us? Are we going to make excuses why we can't be faithful to the Lord? We're standing at the crossroads of this year. Nobody can make you do anything that you don't want to. And my prayer for all of us that have gathered here today, that we would say, Lord, We need you. We need your help. We need your guidance. We need your grace to be all that you want us to be. And so I ask you this morning, where, what direction are you going to go on that crossroad? Father, we thank you this morning as we stand at the crossroads of this brand new year. Already a quarter of the first month is gone. and We understand how quick time passes, Lord. You're not limited by time. And so... We pause today as we look to the future, the unknown, all the variables, all the things that could happen. Lord, we can get so consumed by that instead of resting in you, remaining on the vine and allowing you to live through us. Lord, as we look at even transform these next four evenings, we can choose to become busy with other things or we can choose to hit the pause button in our schedules to say, Lord, I need to spend time with you so that you can recalibrate me for this year. I need to do this on purpose
Yes, life gets busy and there's so much going on. But we see the need to spend time alone with you, God. And so we we would choose to do that. Forgive us, Lord, if we have made excuses. What's important to you isn't important to us. What's important to us seems most important, so we put you on the shelf and we'll pick you up later when it's more convenient. Lord, will you forgive us for that kind of thinking? Lord, I pray for each person in this room and those watching online. Your Holy Spirit is active. We know you're moving. We know that you're active in our in this world. And the problem comes that we are so busy all the time we never pause long enough to see your activity. And so will you help us do that, Lord, just to slow down. To say, Lord, help. And if you're here today and you have not put your trust in Jesus, I just want to encourage you to do that. Beginning of this year. Jesus created you to have a relationship with you. It's all about relationship. It's not, it's not religion. It's not rules and regulations. It's having a relationship with him. To say, Jesus, you died on the cross. You took my place. You paid for my sin. You shed your blood for the forgiveness of all my sin. And I can't do anything to try and earn my way into heaven because you paid my debt in full. And because of that, Lord, I say yes to you. I put all my trust in you today. I thank you for forgiving my sin. Lord, I'm sorry for living my life the way I've wanted to for so long. I'm putting all my trust in you today. And I thank you for becoming my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.